Is Bristol-Myers Squibb, ticker symbol BMY, a good stock to buy now? Welcome to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental analysis of Bristol-Myers Squibb using Warren Buffett's investing framework. We'll look at six key financial metrics before we figure out three different fair values to understand what BMY is worth in today's stock market. Plus, I'll share a special bonus that could be the deciding safety factor when adding Bristol-Myers Squibb stock to your portfolio. Right now, Bristol Meyer Squibb trades for $40.25 per share. In its most recent day of trading alone, it's down 0.59%. When we look over the last year, Bristol Meyer Squibb stock is down 37%, which is way underperforming the market where the S&P 500 is up 26%. Today, Bristol Meyer Squibb trades at its 52-week lows. Looking back over the last decade, we can see the stock has underperformed since around 2017. Overall, they're down 9% for shareholders over this time. However, when we go back before the global financial crisis, Bristol Myers Squibb stock has compounded at 3.2% annually. They were neck and neck with the market for much of this time, but things have really gone differently in the last couple of years. A bright spot for shareholders, right now Bristol Myers Squibb pays a big market beating 5.7% dividend yield. When that's added back to their returns, things have looked all right for the company. Today, six super investors own Bristol Myers, and that's led by the Kahn Brothers Group, who has 6.7% of their portfolio in the business. Bill Miller also started a position in the first quarter of 2024. The company trades $26 below their 52-week high, and again, they're at their 52-week lows. How big is the business? Right now, Bristol Myers Squibb has a $129.5 billion enterprise value. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. Over the long run, it's a company's return on capital that drives the return from their stock. Their returns on capital have increased since the company acquired Celgene for $95 billion, including debt, in what was the biggest deal in pharmaceutical company history. That happened back in 2019, and since then, the company's been on an acquisition spree. They acquired Marathi Therapeutics in October of 2023 for $4.8 billion, and in December of 2023, they announced the acquisition of Karuna Therapeutics for $14 billion and Ray Z Bio for $4.1 billion. These acquisitions all boost their products and their development pipeline. From just under 6% returns in 2019 to more than 12% in 2023, when we average these out, Bristol Myers Squibb earns around 9% returns on capital. That's just slightly better than a normal business. Although these have been trending upwards in the last few years and they're 11% today, this is our first X on metric number one. So what does the company actually do? Bristol Myers Squibb discovers, develops, and markets drugs for various therapeutic areas such as cardiovascular, cancer, and immune disorders. A key focus for Bristol is immuno-oncology, where the firm is a leader in drug development. Bristol derives close to 70% of its total sales from the United States, showing a higher dependence on the U.S. market than most of its peers. In our second metric, we want to see growth in their sales, earnings, and free cash flows. In this time, with all their acquisitions, the company's grown their sales by 74%. The company looks good with their earnings and free cash flows from 2019 until the end of 2023, but things actually took a big hit in the first quarter of 2024. Today, they lost $6 billion in their most recent year. Of this, $13.8 billion comes from in-process R&D expenses. That's their biggest hit since 2020 when they had an expense of $12.5 billion. Because of that, their earnings are negative right now. Even with that hit to their earnings, it hasn't affected their cash flows, and Bristol Myers Squibb brought in $12 billion worth in their last 12 months. That's up 69% from where they were at in 2019. Because their earnings are down, this is an X, but not all hope is lost for the business. In our third metric, we're looking at the company from the view of an individual shareholder. Here we want to see earnings per share growth. BMY earned $2.01 of earnings in 2019 for each share they had outstanding, and that grew to $3.86 at the end of 2023. They had a big negative in 2020 when they had those in-process R&D expenses, and that's also the same in the first quarter of 2024. Because of those expenses, they have negative earnings per share, and it's an X on metric number three. To add insult to injury, the company has also diluted shareholders by about 20%, although most of this dilution has come from their Celgene acquisition, and since 2020, the company has actually steadily been buying back shares. They haven't used shares to pay for an acquisition since then. Metric number four is similar, but even more important, and here we're going to see some limelight for Bristol Myers Squibb. We want their cash flows per share to have grown in the last five years, and these are up. They've grown from $4.32 in 2019 
to in their last 12 months, they're up at $6.10 per share. This is our first check of the day on metric number four. Can the company use this to build momentum in the second half of our analysis? We'll find out right after we cover our first bonus. Right now, Bristol Myers Squibb has a huge market beating 5.7% dividend yield. But are their dividends safe? That's what we want to figure out in our bonus. Bristol Myers Squibb has grown their dividends in each of the last 14 years, and in all of the last five years, they've comfortably supported these using their free cash flows. Today, the company has a reasonable dividend payout ratio compared to these free cash flows, and it looks like they're well supported for continued growth into the future. It's possible the company may be a future dividend aristocrat, and they seem like a dividend growth stock. It's another check on our first bonus. Now in recessions, it's companies with too much debt that can have the biggest losses and even go broke. So we want the sum of their free cash flows to cover their net debt to make sure they're in good financial health. Today, because of their recent acquisitions, they're sitting on $47.4 billion worth. Thankfully for the company in the last five years, they've still produced $60.5 billion worth of free cash flow. That's able to support these debt levels and help the company continue paying dividends to shareholders. It's also being a bit conservative as the company grew a lot following their Celgene acquisition. This is a check here on metric number five, and now we have some momentum going into our second bonus. For bonus number two, we want their current ratio to be greater than one and a half times. This is a measure of looking at the company's short-term liquidities or how they can meet their bills in a hurry. Ben Graham, Warren Buffett's teacher and the father of value investing, wanted to see a one and a half times current ratio. That's where Bristol Myers Squibb was at for three of these five years, and then things have been trending slightly downward since then. They had a 1.43 ratio in 2023, but today they only have a 1.11 ratio. That's not something to be too worried about, but it's not quite what we're looking for. Because of this, it's an X on our second bonus. Now, how much is Bristol Myers Squibb worth? The big metric of them all, metric number six, which also serves as our first valuation, we want Bristol Myers Squibb average free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield attractive to the 10 year treasury. In practical terms, we want this to be above 5%, as that's the S&P 500's historical average. Today, Bristol Myers Squibb has a $129.5 billion enterprise value. This helps us look at the company more like it's a private business by combining their market cap and their net debt together. In an average year over this time, Bristol Myers Squibb brings in $12.1 billion of free cash flow. When we divide that by their enterprise value, we get a pretty high 9.3% average yield. That's above what we wanted to see. Today, the company brought in $12.3 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, it gives us an even higher 9.7% current free cash flow yield. These both are meaningfully up from that 5% we wanted, meaning it's a check all the way on metric number six. But things are just getting started as we look at our next two valuations. Next, we're using a DCF model to estimate their stock's value based on their future cash flows. We'll use their cash flows and then historical assumptions to grow these into the future. We'll assume that they grow their cash flows at 10% annually in each of the next 10 years. Then in the following decade, we'll assume this growth is cut in half and they only grow at 5%. We'll also add in the company's debt to give us a value of their net worth. If we're looking for a market beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett wants to see, then at today's valuations, it looks like a DCF comes in around $54 per share. That's $14 above their current stock price. On top of this, Bristol Myers Squibb has been a predictable business in their past. That's no guarantee going forward for the future, but something that's also a good sign here. Compared to their valuations, we can see the company is historically trading cheap. They're at their lowest end of their EV to sales multiple, and they're also at the lowest end of their range for their EV to free cash flows. That's why our third value, which looks at past multiples and analyst estimates for the future, comes in at $71.72 per share. That's $31 above their current stock price. We've covered the numbers, but Buffett cares even more about a company's qualities. We'll look at what these are before we put them together with our three valuations to get a final fair value for Bristol Myers Squibb at the end of the video. Let's start with a long thesis first. Number one, Bristol is launching several new cancer and immunology drugs that can have high sales in the future given their high unmet medical need. Number two, oncology drug Opdivo holds the potential to radically shift the treatment paradigm in several cancer indications. This could result in annual peak sales of more than $10 billion. And number three, the majority of Bristol's late-stage pipeline focuses on rare diseases, immunology, and cancer, areas where the Food and Drug Administration aggressively approves drugs and typically holds strong pricing power. 
but it's not all positives. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, the acquisition of Celgene brought generic competition for cancer drug Revlimid in 2022, setting up a major growth obstacle over several years given the planned staggered generic entry. Number two, Bristol faces one of the larger patent cliffs by 2028, when cancer drug Opdivo and cardiovascular drug Eliquis likely face heavy generic competition. And number three, the Celgene acquisition added significant debt that could become challenging to repay if competition strengthens against key drugs or pricing pressures intensify in the United States. Now let's put everything together for Bristol Myers Squibb. So far, we learned the company goes three for six on the select six analysis and they check one of our two bonuses. They're just slightly off compared to our safety metric, but they look good compared to their net debt. The company took big in-process R&D expenses, and that's why their earnings are down, which makes this look worse than it is in actuality. They still manage pretty great cash flows, but they are facing that patent cliffs in just a few years' time. Now, when we put together their numbers, the company's qualities, and their valuations, it, look it looks like a fair value for Bristol-Myers Squibb comes in at around $55 per share. That's up $15 from their current stock price, and it actually beats the street target price. BMY stock looks like it may be undervalued. The number one question I get from viewers is how to find undervalued stocks faster. If you want to learn about these opportunities in the market, watch the next video and sign up for our investing tools to make requests, track more than 80 stocks, and get exclusive bonus coverage.